Imagine if there was a way to record your brake activity. Would that information make you a better rider? A little brake check, a little bit of a jab through that turn. All right, there we go. Open up, fully open on that section. That's good. I've been riding my bike professionally for over 23 years, and I've often joked that I've made a career out of going slow. With my background in trials, I know a thing or two about using brakes. I'm used to squeezing them hard and often. So I've often wondered, when I trail ride, am I doing it right? I figured it's time to find out. This is my friend Matt. He's smart. Like, PhD smart. A few years back, he came up with the idea for a brake power meter. That's a device that can record all of your braking data. I went to New Zealand to do a PhD in mountain biking, and I wanted to somehow calculate like the perfect race. So how can you get around an XC race course or a downhill track in the most efficient way possible using what you can do physically um, and then your bike handling? So I was like, okay, yeah, I'll start out by just measuring with power meters. A traditional power meter is in your drivetrain. It's usually in your cranks, and it tells how much power you put out pedaling. And the light bulb really went off when I was collecting some data for one of my races, racing my supervisor, and I could hear him braking all the time, and he's super fit, and um, I found myself keeping up with him in an XC race. And I was like, I shouldn't be able to keep up with this guy in an XC race, except for the fact that he's braking so much. So we need to measure braking. So we decided right then and there to start measuring braking. Okay, but how? Yeah, so all the electronics are housed in here, and that's pretty much the, the brains of it. Uh, there's no wire, wireless sensors or anything since we're using the wire, so um, this one, it's pretty big, and there's not it's not super duper advanced, and it just feeds back to the data logger, so we're able to make this one pretty cheap, actually. It's so sensitive and super duper accurate, uh, and it's just measuring the movement inside little tiny area. I grabbed my friend Jason, we went to Pennsylvania to meet up with Matt so that he could analyze some of our downhill runs. What's your riding experience Jason? How long have you been riding? What would you consider your ability level? I would say novice at best. Uh, I've been riding since 2008 and uh, just trying to ride more and more every year. I've been riding my whole life 30, 40 plus years but I have a trials background so if anybody overuses brakes it's me so it'll be interesting to see if I could find, find the flow on the trail, what, what is the flow score? So the flow score is um, it's an algorithm that I invented to be able to quantify how smoothly you went down a trail based on your braking. So it, takes, it doesn't matter how big you are or how fast you're going, the flow score is going to just tell us how smooth you are. What's a perfect flow score? Perfect flow score would be zero. That means you didn't use your brakes at all and you just got faster and faster the whole time. But that's impossible. And it, it wouldn't be very fast, actually. You'd end up laying on the ground. It's actually about using your brakes really, really hard for a short amount of time and then totally letting off of them. And that's what the experts do really, really good. They slow down from a really high speed to a really low speed in the tiniest amount of time. Uh, whereas um, someone that's not riding as fast, they're going to be squeezing the brakes lightly for longer. Um, so once I plug all this into the computer, I can see pretty much everything that you're doing with the brakes. I can see how it's slowing you down, how fast you speed up after you let off the brakes, how long you've been on the brakes, and how hard you were on the brakes. That's front and rear. So you, I can see just so much. Yeah, now it's recording. It's recording? Yeah. All right. I was excited to have Matt analyze my runs, but I was also interested to see if the data showed any different behaviors between an intermediate and an experienced rider. Let's go on board as Jason takes his first run down. Uh, so here's Jason in. about to drop in. It's definitely pretty steep. Still breaking through that turn. Uh, that one's pretty hard. All right, there we go. Open up, fully open on that section. That's good. A little bit of a jab through that turn. I think he could have made it through that turn without jabbing the brakes. I'd say, Jason, just look through those turns a little bit better and get off those brakes. You don't have to jab them. All right, opened it up again. A little bit of a brake check. Really hard on the brakes. Here's that decisive section. Let's see how he goes through it on his own bike. Off the brakes, nice. That was way faster. Okay, that was better. That was definitely better. All right, now we're getting some speed here. That was good. Oh, okay. So I, he, you could see that he was off the brakes in that turn, which is awesome. But then he 
came out of the turn a little bit too tight, maybe not looking through it all the way. That was pretty good through that turn. That was real good, Jason. Nice work. There it is. Time to grab the bike and the camera from Jason and take a run myself. And the brakes were good. Oh my God. I like his comment about the brakes. Right. Everyone should get new rotors all the time. Rotors make such a big difference. We had to put bigger rotors on for Jeff. You can see it drops in with speed, like right away. Gaps that, pretty good. He's about to brake really hard here. Really hard. Not hitting that turn good. Okay, so he knew that he wasn't hitting that turn perfectly because he wasn't. He was braking all the way through the turn. And I don't think, like I think he knew once he started to think about it. But that's what led to a really high flow score. He went into this turn really, really hot, but braked away most of his speed. So though his flow score adds up. Okay, so he's going really fast here. Barely tapping his brakes, uh, just a little bit of a brake check, which is probably okay at this kind of speed. Really hard on the brakes into this section, which is good. And you need to land and be pretty hard on the brakes for these turns. Oh, oversteer. So you can see that he's braking here in the turns. And I would actually rather see him break between the turns. So he was totally off the brakes in the turns. I could find that traction that he needs so he doesn't slide out or anything. Here's another really fast section. Into that steep section, hard on the brakes. A little bit of a skid. Uh, yeah, he didn't get a green smiley on his skid. But um, a little bit too much braking in the turns again. That was pretty fast. You can see no brakes for that feature, which is really good. So he's able to maintain that speed all the way through. Okay, he, would, he did pretty good on that turn, kind of getting off the brakes a little bit for that sharp turn. And this one's really fast. Brake hard here, let off if you can. That's the trick. Now look at all this space where he's not touching the brakes at all. Hits the jump, doesn't have to slow down at all. Jeff doesn't need to work on jumping, right? Lands hard on the brakes for that turn. And actually did a pretty good job for the next one. Okay, there's, let off left. Okay, that one wasn't bad. I think what we need is a longer run so he can work on his braking before the turns a little bit more. Now that we've both taken our runs, let's have Matt give us an overall comparison. So if we look at these app outputs for Jeff and Jason on Jeff's fastest and Jason's slowest, we can actually see a lot of differences here. So if we look at it, the first big takeaway we get from the brake power meter app output is the flow score. So you can see that Jeff's in the green there with a 17.9 flow score and Jason, he's in the red with a 36.6. So what that means is that Jason was braking a lot of times when he was going slowly. And Jeff was braking only when he really needed to slow down. What led to this is that you can see in the drag time, that's also a huge difference. Jeff's in the green there. He braked for 48 seconds down a two and a half minute trail, which is actually a lot. And if you watch the video, you can see that he's also off the brakes a lot of times, but he's also on the brakes a lot of times because he, he needed to be. It was fast. Jason brakes for 20 seconds more, almost 50% more than Jeff, and that puts him in the red for this trail. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of it was feathering. So you can see with his feathering score, Jeff ended up with a good because he was every time he was on the brakes, he was jabbing. Uh, Jason, he needs a little bit of work in that department, so he slows down more and lets off the brakes when he can. They both actually ended up with a, you know, yellow straight face for skidding. It's really hard to not skid on a trail, especially when it's loose. But I definitely want everyone to know that, you know, skids are for squids. And that we don't want to be ruining the trails. So you can see that Jeff and Jason had kind of similar brake energy. But since Jason had a higher drag time, his brake power was lower. So it's energy divided by time is your power. Jeff's power was pretty good, 643 watts when he was on the brakes. If you imagine yourself pedaling at 600 watts, that's pretty hard. 
Since Jeff was jabbing his brakes a lot, that meant he was on them really hard and off them. So once he was off them, the brakes had the chance to cool. All of Jason's energy, on the other hand, he was putting that energy in over long periods of time. So what that meant is that his brake temperature got really high because it didn't have a chance to cool down. Brake balance tends to change on different kinds of trails. Uh, it's actually really nice to see that both of them using their front brake more. Most people don't get the opportunity to use their brake, their front brake 70% and 30% on the rear like we hear for motorcycles. It's just actually not possible most of the time on mountain bikes, basically due to traction. Uh, but it's really good to see that both of them are using their front brake more. So what we'd see if they were using their rear brake more is they'd probably get a red sad face for their skidding because they'd just be skidding way too much. They were both braking a bit too late into the turns. And for most people, this is their weakness. Everyone's braking through a turn. And it takes a real conscious effort of braking before the turn and letting off through it so we have traction all the way through as our bike's leaning. We don't want to be braking when we only have a few knobs on the ground. We want to brake in a straight line when all our knobs are on the ground. I had a ton of fun making this video, checking out the brake power meter, and having Matt analyze my runs. Just to recap his top three braking tips. Number one, brake as hard as you can to slow down as quickly as you can without losing traction. Number two, get confident using your front brake to slow down. And last but not least, the one that I need the most work on as well, Get all of your braking done while you're still going in a straight line before you turn. Hopefully you found this information useful. Comment below on whether or not you think the brake power meter could be a useful tool. Until next time, get out on the trail and be a boss.